How to start a car detailing business and become successful. So are you tired of being told what to do? Or perhaps you want to be your own boss? You have this entrepreneur side of you? Or perhaps just school is not your thing? Regardless of the reasons, there's never been a better time to start a car detailing business than right now. First of all, the car detailing industry is there to stay because manual labor is needed to do the job. So people will never get replaced by robots, machines, or the internet, right? And you guys are in luck if you've never been on my channel before. This is one of the biggest car detailing channels on YouTube and at the moment of this recording uh, we surpassed 650,000 subscribers and we're approaching 80 million views so you're at the right spot. I have been detailing cars for over 24 years now and I love to share my passion and knowledge with you guys, my viewers. So today we'll be covering five topics. Uh, see this as a master class of how to start uh, your car detailing business and of course get the tips and tricks to become successful at it. So we're going to be answering topics like, first of all, um, how do you get the skills, right? Where do you learn to get the skill set? How do you get those? Uh, then, how do you get your name out there? That's also very important. We're going to be talking about what's your starting budget. So what is the amount of money that is needed to get started? What kind of tools do you need? The products and the equipment. Uh, then we're going to talk about how do you get new customers and how you generate new leads because of course that's what is going to bring the income to you. And last but not least in the fifth place, how do you uh, price your services? So guys, it's a jam-packed video. Make sure to share this video with any friends or family or people that you think might be interested in starting their own uh, detailing business. And if it's the case with you, well, you're going to learn a lot of stuff today and hopefully get you started. A lot of my viewers have been able to start their car detailing business and become quite successful at it. And if you work hard, you put sweat equity and you're passionate about what you do. If so, if you're detail oriented, well, not only will you have a job that's fulfilling, and that will bring you a lot of joy in life, but you'll be able to bring food to the table, provide for your family, and uh, who knows, well, a lot of success is possible. And yes, I wish to all my audience or people who start their own detailing business to perhaps make their dreams come true, uh, like my own brand new uh, 2021 Porsche 911 Turbo S. So I wish you guys a lot of success. So uh, enough said. Today, I'm here to share tips, tricks, and get you guys hopefully started on the right foot. So you know the drill. Without further ado, stay tuned. Let's go ahead and start the show. So hey guys, I'm Pan. Welcome to the show. I hope you guys are having a great day. So let's dig right into the topic. I think it's an exciting one today. Uh, I did a uh, how to start your car detailing business a while ago when I first started my channel, uh, roughly five years ago now. Uh, but here is an updated tutorial with all the latest tips and tricks. And of course, I had uh, time to make a lot of friends in the detailing industry through the years, lots of contacts. And of course, many of my viewers and friends are also professional detailers, whether they're mobile detailers or work from a shop, or even like in my case, uh, work from their own house. So regardless of uh, which setting you guys would prefer, today we're here to share a bunch of tips, tricks, and uh, things to get you started, right? By the way, uh, if I talk about any products, tools, or equipment, I'll make it simple for you guys. I'll include the links in the description under the video for you guys to check them out. So all you have to do is sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So let's go uh, right into the, to the thick of things and talk about the five topics that I promised. So first of all, we're going to talk about where you get the skills to do the job, right? Uh, then how you get your name out there, the starting budget needed, so what kind of equipment, tools, and products you need to do a good job, uh, how to get customers and generate new leads, and last but not least, how to price your services. So topic number one, the skills. Where do you learn the skills to become a good detailer? Well, you're in luck because we're in 2021 at the moment of this recording and YouTube is perhaps the biggest school of learning, guys. You're in luck. There's a bunch of car detailers that have channels on YouTube that you can follow and learn all the tips, the tricks, tutorials, product reviews to get you started on the right foot. So perhaps if you're watching this video, you're already inclined to like detailing because perhaps maybe you wash your own car or your family's vehicles or your friends, uh, so on and so forth. But if you have 
have that inclination towards a loving taking care of your vehicle, you're already on the right foot. And so, uh, well, there's a bunch of channels like mine included where I test and I review products and I give tutorials on how to do things and we cover everything, right? So from washing the exterior of the vehicle to doing some interior detailing to more advanced things like paint correction, machine polishing, uh, how to do engine bay detailing and more advanced stuff like applying a ceramic coating or a graphene coating or the basic stuff even like how to apply a wax or just a paint sealant, how to do a clay bar, how to use an iron remover, uh, basically how to do a rinseless wash or a waterless wash because not everybody can use the two bucket wash method. What is a two bucket wash method, right? Uh, so basically you have the uh, chance nowadays to be able to visually see uh, and learn. So I think that's the uh, biggest thing or uh, biggest advancement is thanks to the technology now where you guys have access to stuff that we didn't have. So when I started to uh, like 24 years ago, I was 16. So we're talking now in the 1990s. Well, there wasn't a lot, right? We had a few bulletin boards on the internet and that was pretty much it. So you had uh, to search long and hard to try and figure out how to do things on your own. And so today, well, YouTube is this great mass collection of different schools of thought. So um, don't base yourself only on one channel. Watch a few of them and uh, you can get the, uh, the best bits and pieces from each and every one and basically have different ways of doing things because one thing you got to keep in mind there isn't one single proper way or one single technique that is the best out there there are many different ways of doing things so it all depends on of course your style what you prefer doing what services you'll be offering we'll touch on that a bit later in the video um, but so yeah youtube is definitely the number one major source even for me today i'll spend some hours at the end of each day uh, watching videos on youtube from my different colleagues and other YouTube channels because I like to be uh, up to date on what's going on because every month it seems there are new products, new brands, new techniques uh, and new stuff coming forward so you got to make sure to stay on top of things right. So one thing that's super important is going to be hard work. So detailing is not a joke. You need to put a lot of sweat equity into your business uh, if you want to become successful. And sky's the limit, by the way. So if you work really hard, you can make your dreams come true and uh, you can definitely have some crazy income. Uh, I know some professional detailers out there who have businesses that uh, generate 300,000, 400,000, half a million dollars, a million plus in a year. They have dozens of employees. They have many cars in their fleet to go around or vehicles, right? Trucks to go around to uh, different places if they're a mobile detailing company, for example. Um, so sky's the limit. However, we always start with humble beginnings. So don't think you're going to go right out of the gate making millions of dollars. That's not how it works. Uh, if that's what people want to make you believe, well, they're lying and you're going to hit a brick wall pretty quickly and you're going to get discouraged. So the start, as any professional detailer would tell you, is always very slow and you got to build your reputation, right? So people have to get to know the quality of work that you put out and uh, well, word to mouth works uh, pretty, pretty quickly and that's how usually your reputation spreads around. So always make sure you put Put out the best possible work out there. That is the number one thing is hopefully if you're watching these videos, you have some attention to detail because that's what you're going to want to perfect the most is, well, it's a detailing business, right? So you want to be sure that you have a lot of attention to details. So what other ways can you learn stuff? Well, there are a lot of car detailing forums as well. So if YouTube is not quite your thing, uh, for me, that's the number one source of education today. But uh, there are a lot of car detailing forums on which uh, you can learn a lot of stuff. So things like uh, AutoGeek is one pretty much one of the biggest ones, but there are other ones out there as well. So if you prefer uh, the bulletin board style or the online forums to read and to comment and to ask questions, uh, by all means, do that too. And know that there are also a lot of in-person workshops. So more and more now, what I see is car detailing businesses out there um, that uh, have some special guests come over, so detailing brands that come over and give some clinics or some workshops on how to use their products, how to do some stuff like skills like paint correction, for example, machine polishing, which polishes or compounds to use. Uh, if I look at uh, Rupes, the um, polisher company, they provide a lot of workshops on how to use their, their products as well. Uh, G-Technic is another one, so they're um, a company that focuses a lot on, on ceramic protection, so uh, they have workshops on how to use their products. Or um, detailing shops like Chicago Auto Pros and the Chicago area. They uh, host a lot of events where they have people come over for detailing master classes, right? So you can learn those kinds of things. So go online and search for um, any master classes or any detailing workshops that might be around in your area. And who knows, 
Uh, that's a, a great entry into the, um, into the field. And there are also some centers more and more now where kind of schools where they teach you how to do uh, detailing. So that's another thing that you can Google. So depending on which country you live in, of course, which city, it might not necessarily be available to everyone, uh, but Google if there are any training centers available for you guys to learn how to do some detailing. But of course, the easiest one, and uh, it's it's a free thing, well, YouTube videos, right? Uh, we're there to share our knowledge and passion. There are tons and tons of quality detailing channels uh, on YouTube, so go ahead and enjoy those. And um, yeah, that's, that's how you're gonna get to learn the skills. Okay, so topic number two is how to get your name out there. So of course, everybody's scared, right? When you're starting something new, it's totally normal. Um, you've never been used to approaching people or selling yourself or uh, trying to uh, get some new leads or some customers to come and meet you, right? So usually the first thing that a lot of professional detailers will tell you is that they first started their business by detailing cars for friends and family. So offer some detailing packages at a reduced rate. So this is kind of a foray, right? A first try into the detailing world. First of all, it will allow you to see if you enjoy the process. It will allow you to get some feedback from those, uh, let's say, easier customers, right? Because they're friends and family. And so it'll allow you to assess, first of all, uh, hone in on your skills, see where you're at, um, and to see if you live up to the expectations of people. So have an interview with them and see what they want done on their vehicles. Is it only the interior, just the exterior, or a bit of both? Are there any trouble spots on the paint, for example, that needs to be attended to? And do some research on how to correct that before you go and start the, uh, the detailing job. And uh, then you do it and you uh, collect the feedback, right? Uh, another thing that you can do is do a bit of door-to-door -door in your uh, local area, in your neighborhood. And I know it seems hard, but uh, trust me, um, like muster your courage, go out there and do it. The first time you do things is always the scariest, but uh, once you get used to it, it'll be second nature. So do some door-to-door -door, uh, knocking and uh, just offer people your services. Of course, when you start off, you're not gonna have a, a, um, a huge inventory of services that you're gonna offer. You wanna stay nice and simple. So usually we uh, do some interior work, a bit of exterior work, maybe a combination of both, but nothing too complex. More on that later when we talk about what services you should be offering when you start off. Uh, but but yeah, just do some door-to-door, -door, maybe pass some flyers around. Uh, another great way is to attend local car shows or to join car clubs. Now, I remember in 2004, uh, I had one of my cars at the time was a uh, Nissan Sentra SER Spec V. So kind of the sporty version, right? With a 2.5 liter engine from the Nissan Altima. Uh, and so it was the uh, the years of uh, tuning, the Fast and the Furious movies were out and it was a super fun time. And so I joined my local car club, which was the uh, Nissan Performance Club here in Montreal, Canada. And uh, we'd reunite once a month at a restaurant and basically fill the parking lot with all sorts of cars. And uh, people were noticing that I always had the cleanest and most awesome looking ride of all of them there. And so I started offering my services. So it was people like me who were inclined to want to keep their cars looking nice, but didn't necessarily necessarily have the skill set to do so and uh, so they hired me to take care of their vehicles and it just ballooned and exploded like I remember that summer it was crazy uh, I was doing four to five cars a day uh, spending 10 12 15 hours just working on those vehicles and uh, that allowed me to buy a lot of mods, so modifications for the vehicle, the sound system, performance parts, so on and so forth. And um, just to, to start also building a budget to increase the quality of my products, to reinvest in the business as well, to uh, get some uh, better equipment, uh, some tools that I had always dreamt of, because you always start up small, right? You don't necessarily need everything and to become or to get into debt to start your detailing business. That's one thing I wanna hammer in this video to get that in your heads, uh, is that you don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to start your business. Do not do that. You start off with a basic budget. We're going to talk about the uh, starting budget later on in the video, so stay tuned all the way till the end. Uh, but you're going to see that you don't need that much to start up. And then as you're growing and you're expanding, you're going to be offering more services. You're obviously going to be becoming more profitable and you're going to reinvest that money to get better products, better tools, better equipment uh, to be able to expand even further in the types of services that you're offering. Uh, so yeah, the car clubs is usually a, a, a great thing to, to go to and to attend because usually there's a lot of people who absolutely love their cars and their rides. And you know, if you're a car lover like me, how important our cars are to us and we want to keep them looking great all the time. Uh, so that's a great thing. 
Uh, and yeah, just don't be scared. Approach people, have this uh, heart to heart with them, offer your services, act professional as well, dress the part right. Uh, you don't want to look like a slob. That's another key thing when you're doing detailing. Don't forget that you're going into usually what's a person's second biggest expense after their house, usually in their life. And uh, you're getting into their intimate areas, right? figuratively speaking, uh, but still, so their vehicle is their prized possession and you want to look professional and you want to take care of it as if it's your own. So always keep that in mind. Uh, and what will set you apart is the quality of your work. So again, like I said before, you have to be detail oriented. That's one key thing. Don't, um, you have to not be scared of putting some sweat equity because it's manual labor. Uh, it's back breaking labor as well. But uh, if you're someone that likes to work hard, well, again, you can make your dreams come true. Um, a little trick that I had back in the day that I can share with you guys to start off and, and just get your name out there is when you're doing a detail job, what I liked to do back in the day is take some pictures, right? Before and after. So I would post that on the car forum, for example, and people were able to see the uh, car in the state when it came to me and how it left after I had uh, taken care of it and had done a full detailing job. And so I think uh, a picture is worth a thousand words and that got tons of customers to want to reach out. Um, today, it's even easier because you can hook up and uh, I highly recommend that you start off with a Facebook account and an Instagram account because social media is the king today. Uh, that's one of the easiest way to spread the word around that you're doing some awesome job and uh, just share that content. So take some pictures or take some mini video clips when you're working, perhaps even a TikTok uh, account if you want that or uh, even a YouTube account. Hey, hey, that's one of the best ways to, to show the actual work you're doing is you're putting it out there, right? For people to see with their own eyes and when they see the results. When they see how good that car looks in the end, they'll be more inclined to want to come and see you. So start up your, your social media accounts. Um, also think about creating a website. So not all of that has to be done at the beginning. So the free stuff, obviously, you can do the Facebook account and create your Instagram account freely at the beginning or even a YouTube account if you want and start sharing uh, as quickly as you can your results on social media. And then as you grow, you can invest into having your website. More on that uh, in a few seconds because marketing is going to be a big key thing. Digital marketing today is huge and that's one way that uh, you can rank your business on the uh, Google pages, right? So when people do some research, for example, let's say um, you live in uh, San Francisco and a person looks for uh, ceramic coating San Francisco. Well, you want your website to pop up among the first in the results and to do that, you need digital marketing. So Facebook ads and Google ads. Uh, by the way, I do dove into those topics, so Facebook and Google ads uh, in two in-depth videos for digital marketing on my YouTube channel, so you can search for those. Uh, I did those in collaboration with a digital marketing guru who uh, basically brought my audience from A to Z or A to Z on exactly how to do that. So basically, it's all about SEO, search engine optimization, to help you rank higher in the Google pages and the Google results so people can find your business very quickly. Um, so yeah, as you grow, you can start your own website. I highly recommend that. Uh, don't wait too long for that because of course, you know, everything is digital today. We all do research online. So you want people to find you because uh, if there's no way for people to find your business, you can be the best detailer in the world. If they don't know where to find you, well, they're not going to come to you, right? Uh, so there are uh, some easy websites like Wix or GoDaddy if you want uh, a, a company to host your website or find easy ways to create web pages. It doesn't have to be this fancy thing once again. All you want is a tool for you guys to be able to rank higher on uh, search results and then the work is going to speak for itself. Also, you might want to get some business cards done, right? So again, um, early on in your entrepreneur uh, endeavors, well, you want to get some business card because when if you go, for example, at car clubs, uh, car meets and stuff like that, well, you can pass your cards around. So if you tell somebody, hey, um, if you want to hook up for some car detailing, well, of course, uh, reach out to me. You give your business card and boom, you're good to go. And that also makes you look super professional. Okay, so topic number three is probably something uh, that I get asked a lot is what is the starting budget? So what amount of money do you need to start a car detailing business? Now, there isn't one good answer, but one thing I can tell you, do not put yourself into debt to start a detailing business. Any detailing professional will tell you this. There is no need to spend tens of thousands of dollars to start off with the best equipment, the best pressure washers, the best tools, the best machine polishers uh, to get a fleet of two or three different trucks, put the lettering on the trucks, uh, get some crazy uniforms and t-shirts and all that kind of stuff um, and the best products out there. No, guys. 
you have to first start by doing the work with the basics because you're going to be offering the basic packages when you start off. So uh, that'll be in our um, in uh, later on in the topics, right? When we talk about what products and services you should be offering. But basically, again, do not put yourself into debt. And as a general rule of thumb, a good starting budget is anywhere from $500 to roughly $1,000, uh, but that's really the max that you should be spending. Uh, closer to $500, um, that's more than enough. You're going to get an entry-level pressure washer, for example. So when we talk about, well, what tools you need, uh, what equipment and what products, you need a few basic things. So you're going to need things like a pressure washer, a few buckets, some wash mitts, some microfiber towels. Uh, you're going to get stuff like uh, applicators, right, for tire dressing, stuff like that. It can be microfiber applicators or foam applicators. Uh, you're going to want to get a, a vacuum, an extension cord, uh, potentially um, a clay bar, a steam cleaner, a carpet extractor. Again, it depends on which services you'll be offering when you start off. But the basic, basic tools and do not go for the high-end stuff. You don't need that right away. Always remember that you're going to make some profit eventually. And when you do, then you can reinvest that amount into your business and continue growing. So by reinvesting, then you can purchase higher end equipment or stuff that you didn't have. Uh, in other tools, uh, you might want to get an entry level machine polisher uh, if you want to apply some liquid waxes or liquid sealants or do some quick paint correction. Uh, but you don't need any crazy tools or equipment to start off, guys. Uh, 24 years ago, when I first started at 16 years old, I had uh, a few wash buckets, some wash mitts. We didn't even have microfiber towels. Technology didn't exist back then, so we had some basic terry cloths. Uh, and for uh, products, you're going to need a, a pH neutral car shampoo. Get a wax free shampoo because you don't want to have any protection because sometimes you might have something like a ceramic coating on a vehicle. You don't want to apply waxes on that. So just get a good basic pH neutral car shampoo. Uh, you're going to want to get a glass cleaner, a tire dressing, an all purpose cleaner to take care of cleaning stuff right inside and out. You can dilute that uh, at different ratios, a spray sealant or spray wax. So that is going to act as your protection. So hydrophobic properties, give some UV protection, some slickness, gloss, that kind of stuff and protect the paintwork. Um, you also want to get uh, something like a tire dressing, obviously, uh, and uh, an interior detailer to help you um, quickly clean and protect the interior surfaces. And and potentially also some leather cleaning stuff, uh, leather care, such as a leather cleaner and a leather um, uh, sealant or leather protectant because you want to protect those against dye transfer and uh, friction damage and that kind of stuff. So as you see, the list isn't that, uh, it isn't that long, right? So you need some basic tools, basic equipment, a few brushes, and uh, you're going to go a long way with that. Believe me, uh, everyone who starts and is successful to this day, uh, they all have a common trait. We all started with the basic tools and equipment. So today I have, I'm lucky enough to be able to have like seven or eight different polishers, right? The most expensive stuff like the Flex 3401. I have the Rupes LHR 15 Mark II and that kind of stuff. Uh, I have some uh, cordless polishers and I have the best pressure washer in a German-made uh, Krenzler 1122 TST. Uh, that's way over a thousand bucks, by the way. Um, but you don't need that. So I started with a basic Karcher K5 back in the day and uh, that was more than enough. Even a garden hose, if you detail from your own house, that's still good enough as long as you have a water source, right? What more can you want? Uh, and so as you expand, as you grow, you can reinvest and then purchase the stuff like you need. Perhaps you'll want a car dryer with filtered hot dry air uh, later on. Uh, you'll perhaps want a more performing carpet extractor. If that's a part of your business that you see, also you're going to reevaluate according to what really works for you. So if people hire you a lot for some interior work, well, maybe you're going to want to step up to a, um, a uh, more uh, industry or high grade um, product such as a better performing carpet extractor or something that's higher performance as far as a um, steam cleaner goes, right? So you're going to readjust according to what you see also people hire you for the most or um, what generates the most income for you. If you're an expert in paint correction and you do a lot of machine polishing and uh, you eventually hire a few uh, people to help you out as well and you have some employees and uh, machine polishing is a big part of your business, well then perhaps, yeah, you're going to want to invest in some higher end, higher quality machines uh, that can do eight to 10 hours of paint correction a day nonstop and can be used and abused and uh, 
uh, still be some crazy workhorses for your business. But again, do not get into debt. Keep that in mind when you start your business. Always start small. Um, work with some products that are not necessarily the highest end as well. There are a lot of uh, brands now that have some high-performance products that are available even at your local uh, hardware store or auto parts store. So if I look at companies like Meguiar's, for example, or Turtle Wax, they have some very good very affordable products that you can purchase that will still give you professional level results if you use them correctly because a lot of detailing is how you do the work and not necessarily the products that you use, right? Uh, and uh, there's also brands like, again, Meguiar's that have a professional line of products that you can get in gallon sizes that you can also dilute. So, of course, dilutable products means that it's going to go a lot, lo uh, lot longer for you and you're going to stretch your budget a lot more uh, because it'll be uh, more efficient as far as uh, your um, spending budget goes because when you dilute products, you're generating a lot more product for the money that you're spending. Um, so the basic products, the basic tools, and basically that'll get you going. But again, keep it small. I like to tell my audience to always start small and see what works for you. Uh, and that'll be a minimal risk, right? So if you see that the business is not working and after a few months, give it time though, because it takes time to build an audience. It takes time to build a customer base. And so after six months to a year, reevaluate, reassess. And if you start it off with just a budget of 500 bucks or a thousand bucks, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't work out for you. So you can go back to whatever previous job you had or maybe launch yourself in another endeavor. So you got to first do start off, kick things off, get the basics, get the job done, uh, get cust new customers in by friends and family, that kind of stuff, and then graduating to perhaps car clubs or some new customers, get the word out there. You can also tell them to leave reviews on uh, your YouTube channel or leave reviews on your Instagram page or Facebook page or on your website. That is very important to get customer feedback and to get more customers as well. Um, we're gonna get into that, so get the new leads in just a few seconds. But yeah, get just get started. That's what everybody is gonna tell you as well, is forget about your worries, forget about your scares, do it. Go out there, start off, get the basic tools and equipment, start doing the job, and uh, you're gonna see things are gonna start like steamrolling, and it's gonna be that snowball effect, and uh, lo and behold, you're gonna be uh, super successful in a matter of no time if you put in, again, sweat equity, hard work, and uh, you're always rethinking things. So reevaluate, take a step back every now and then, assess where you're at now, and uh, is it profitable? Are you doing things right? What can you uh, do to readjust? You can even sign up to the IDA, right? right? The International Detailers Association. So to for first pass some tests online to see if you have the skills necessary to, be to have the accreditation, and also get a lot of support from the detailing community uh, in not only starting your business, but uh, what you can do to further grow. So the detailing community is absolutely uh, amazing and there's a lot of good people out there that uh, want to help uh, transmit basically their knowledge their tips and tricks to you to help you grow because the uh, stronger we are as a community the uh, the better we all work together well everybody's going to be successful and that's what we want we want to educate the population out there uh, that detailing is super important to have things done to your vehicle and uh, if it's done by a uh, professional detailer well it's going to help keep their in investment for some people or at least the um, their babies <laughs> which are their cars looking uh, better and greater and increasing the resale value, that kind of stuff, and have more enjoyment of driving a freshly cleaned and detailed vehicle. So topic number four, how do you get new customers and how do you generate new leads? Well, first of all, like I said uh, a bit earlier on in the video, the uh, very important thing in 2021 and moving forward is going to be social media. So again, start your Instagram accounts, start your Facebook accounts. It can be a TikTok account or a YouTube channel. Um, those are all free tools. Get the word out there. Show the work that you're doing. Again, a video or a picture is worth a thousand words and that's how people are going to get to know you. Uh, also, ask for your customers to leave reviews on your social sites or your website and uh, that also gets people going and that's get, that gets the communication started and traction going for you as well. You can potentially even offer rebates or discounts to clients that refer other customers to you, right? So imagine one customer refers two or three people to you and then those two or three people refer two or three more. So you see that snowball effect 
and how exponential that effect can be, well, you can offer an incentive to those customers that uh, help drive new customer leads to you by offering special discounts or rebates or some packages or uh, maybe an extra service on a detailing job that they have in the future. So it'll make them happy. It'll make you happy because you're generating new leads. And uh, yeah, everybody's happy at the end of the day. Also, as you grow, it's going to be very important that you guys start learning the ropes about digital marketing. So ad spending is crucial. Any successful detailing business out there. So not just Joe Blow at the corner of the street uh, that has a car wash business. We're talking a truly successful detailing uh, business with a true business entrepreneur that's behind it. Uh, like you guys want to become, hopefully, if you wa or you're watching this video. You're going to have to think about setting a budget aside every month to have digital marketing done on Google ads and Facebook ads. Those are two crucial things because they're going to help you key in to the audience that you're looking for. So according to where you live, you'll be able to have your publicity posted in front of eyes of people in your area, first of all, because obviously if a person lives in another country, they're not going to hire you for their detailing services. So by having those companies, the, the giants, so Facebook ads and Google ads work for you, uh, with that digital marketing spending that you're doing, well, basically you're honing in to what your target audience should be. So are there more males purchasing detailing services in your area? Is it more females? Are there people 18 to 24 years of age? Or is it uh, people over there in their mid thirties or in their fifties? Is it uh, a retiree uh, type environment that you uh, live in? Uh, basically, it's gonna help you hone in once again and drive the people that are truly looking for detailing services out there. You'll be able to find them, get eyeballs watching your website and wanting to hire you. And once again, I have two a majorly important videos videos on my channel that I did with a digital marketing guru and specialist on how to do those things uh, in very, uh, very minute details. If you guys want to learn to geek out on that, if you want to do that on your own, for example. So go check out those two tutorials. I'll leave the links in the description as well to those two videos. They're, they're super important, but you guys really have to learn the ropes of digital ad spending because that is how you're going to generate new leads because there's two ways of generating leads, right? You have the organic way to grow. So basically, well, um, word of mouth, so person to person, uh, hopefully you get the word around or on some websites or posting or going to car meets and talking to people. So that's the uh, natural organic way of growing. So that's a slower process, um, but it still does work. A lot of people have been successful for decades using that older technology if we want or that old school way of doing things. Um, but now we're in the 2020s and digital marketing is key. Just look at everything you watch, right? Even the ads on YouTube, uh, they're always honing in on what audience is watching and which uh, ads to target to the people that are watching. So for example, if you're inclined to want to purchase some headphones, well, there is a high chance that you've been searching for that online and you're going to see some ads appear for headphones. We sometimes think, uh, think it's magic, but that's just uh, basically the uh, internet that understands or the programming and the computer stuff that goes behind the scenes kind of understands your search criteria, what you've been uh, looking for, your search history, that kind of stuff. And they'll suggest ads to you that are more um, highly to be successful because that's what you were looking for. So same goes for your uh, business. You want to hone into digital marketing and uh, go out there and sell yourself by having a uh, marketing strategy, by having a budget to have some ads created for you. And uh, once you set that, you set it, you forget it, and it'll be generating leads for you in no time. And uh, yeah, you're gonna grow exponentially quicker. So that's the second way of doing things and probably the most efficient way today. All right, so the fifth topic is how to price your services. So that's another super big question. Uh, that's a question that's a lot harder to answer because I will say that prices vary greatly depending on location and geography. So for example, a detailing job, say uh, an exterior, just a quick wash, clay and wax. So if you have that job done in California versus New York uh, in the United States, or if you had that done in Montreal, Canada, or perhaps in Paris in France, or, or a Cape Town, South Africa, well, I can guarantee you that all those places for that same service done by the same person would have different prices. So depending on the country you live in, the prices are gonna vary greatly. And you'll even notice sometimes in the same city, depending on which neighborhood you're in, it can also vary greatly. So there's a lot of factors that play into that. So what is your clientele? 
What is the average income of the people who live there? Uh, what do the people in that geography or environment look for? So if you're in, in a rainier place versus a more desert environment or a hot and humid uh, or a colder area with winters. So people won't be necessarily looking for the same types of services, right? So your best bet that I always uh, give as a tip to people who want to learn how to do their pricing is search for online detail shops that, uh, well, detail retail shops, right, that are uh, next to you where you live, so some professional detail shops, and look at their pricing scheme or go out there and have a talk with the owner and see what services they offer and what prices they offer as well so you can be competitive. Now, don't do the mistake that a lot of rookies do is to underprice yourself or undercut yourself. You do not want to do that. So don't do that $10 detail that you're going to spend seven hours on for 10 or 15 bucks. Uh, first of all, you're not going to be profitable. And at the end of the day, don't forget, you're a business. If you're a business, you have to generate income. To generate income, you have to price your things accordingly, right? So uh, if you have a shop that you're going to be renting, you have to account for water, uh, the utilities, the electricity, that kind of stuff. Uh, the rent, of course, on the property. If you're a mobile detailer, it could perhaps be uh, your uh, rental vehicle. Uh, if it's a truck or a small SUV that you have, uh, it can be your own car as well. It doesn't have to be a truck, right? When you start off with the basic equipment, uh, but ba basically factor in what your expenses are and what you need to be profitable at the end of the day. Never forget that you as the owner, you have to look at your own interest too. Now, there's one tip that I also want to share is to never um, over deliver on services. So what you want to over deliver on is the quality of the work that you put out. So those are two different things, right? So when you're doing your job, of course, always over deliver on the quality of the work that you're doing, meaning that you're going to go for the little details. You're going to go that extra mile to make sure that everything is done to perfection, that there are no water drip marks. If you've washed the car, right? Uh, there's no unattended spots or scratches or swirls that you didn't attend to. If you were looking for a paint correction, for example, or if you apply to wax, you want a uniform application and the car to look good, not any spots that you forgot, right? Be proud of what you do. Have a way to, to do a walk around of the vehicle before you present it to the customer and um, well, do your own troubleshooting. So go around, have a checklist perhaps, and look at what you're doing and look at the end result and make sure you're putting out the best quality work out there. Now, what I don't want people to do is have some have a tendency when they start off that they think they have to over deliver in the amount of services that they provide. That, first of all, gives false expectations for the future for your viewers, as for your customers. So for example, let's say they paid you just to do an exterior wash. Well, a lot of people have the tendency to say, you know what, I'll throw in for free the interior detail as well. Well, first of all, you're going to be working harder for something that the customer did not even pay for, which is a big no-no in the detailing business. If they paid you for an exterior wash, deliver on that exterior wash. Now, what happens if you also give them that interior detail for free? Well, you're setting them up now that for that small exterior price, they also got an interior detail. So imagine what's going to happen the day that you're going to want to charge for the interior detail as well. They're going to be like, well, hey, last time you gave it to me for free. Now you're charging me. So don't set them up for expectations that are unrealistic and don't over deliver by giving more services than what they paid for. If you follow a lot of the uh, mobile detailers out that are out there, especially or professional detailing channels, what they'll tell you is exactly that. When they first started, they really, really wanted to get their, the name out there and they started offering free stuff and it was super complicated because it was supposed to be a two hour job. It ended up being a four to five hour job because they were doing extras, right? So the person paid just for the interior detail while they also washed the exterior. Or they, like I said, they, it, they paid just for the um, exterior wash and uh, the person or the detailer decided to do the interior as well or perhaps an engine bay detail for free just to make sure the, the customer is super happy. Well, that didn't do anyone justice or didn't serve anyone well because you set that customer up for disappointment later on when you're going to have to charge and you're basically working for free, which is not a good thing. So again, what you want to do is don't undercut yourself, price your things appropriately to what the competition is doing. You want to stay competitive, but don't undersell yourself and certainly don't over deliver in the, the, the number of services that you're giving. Give what the customer paid for, but over deliver on the quality of work that you're doing. So that's an awesome tip. And uh, that's going to be a way for you guys to, um, to basically get more customers in. They're going to be happy and satisfied with uh, basically what they saw and the work that you did. Also, never forget to uh, 
to start off with some detailing packages that you feel comfortable with. Don't go offering 12 to 15 different services when you first start off. It's gonna be overwhelming for you and you're gonna quickly feel that, uh, well, you're setting yourself up for disappointment and for failure. Usually start off with three packages is my recommendation. So an exterior wash, an interior detail, and perhaps the third is the full detail, meaning an inside and out cleaning. And as you grow from there, and as you learn new skills as well, and as you reinvest in your business to get new tools, new products, and new equipment, that's when you can start offering things like paint correction. If the person wants to remove scratches and swirls, increase gloss and that kind of stuff. You can start offering waxing services, paint sealant services, uh, or the uh, newest trend that is very profitable, by the way, is ceramic coatings or graphene coatings. So those little glass bottles, those offer protection that lasts anywhere from two plus years all the way up to seven years from some professional coatings out there. Uh, so it's just a more durable form. See that as a wax or sealant on steroids, right? Typical Carnuba waxes will give you two to three months of protection. Paint sealants will give you four to six months of protection. And ceramic and graphene coatings last for years. So higher gloss, um, a uh, easier to wash during your maintenance washes, hydrophobic properties, UV protection, slickness, gloss, a bunch of stuff. So they're the ultimate forms of paint protection. But to do that, it requires a lot more steps, especially for preparation. I have a bunch of tutorials, by the way, on my channel on how to do anything that's car detail detailing related. So hopefully you'll go and check those videos out. So from washing the car inside and out to applying a wax or which products to buy, which equipment to purchase, uh, how to do uh, apply a ceramic coating or graphene coating. I have tutorials on everything. So feel free, go watch them. And uh, yeah, so don't start with too many services. And as you grow, first of all, you'll see what you prefer, right? What you prefer doing. Some like being interior specialists. Uh, some lo love doing paint corrections. Others, like me now, I only do high-end details, so interior and exterior, which includes a full ceramic coating or graphene coating application. Uh, so the new car preps is what I like to do, but that's after 24 years of detailing. That's not how I started off. So you're gonna reassess, reevaluate, again, take that step back, as we said before. Uh, have a general overview of what you've been doing. See what has been more successful for you. If you see that it's more the interior detail jobs that generate a lot of profit for you, we'll hone in on that and maybe target your audience more for that and get the equipment that's necessary to do a better job uh, in that specific thing, right? So if you can find your niche inside the detailing world, good for you. And uh, so yeah, as you'll grow, you'll reassess and see what works for you and then branch off offering more and more services, reinvesting in your business, spending on digital ads, digital marketing, uh, increasing your quality of products and buying uh, heavier duty uh, machinery, equipment, tools, and that kind of stuff. So we're tying all that in. So the most important is to go out there, guys. Enjoy doing some detailing. Get your first customers in regardless of how you have to do it. Um, get them in, do the job see the results, see if you enjoy doing it, and keep a smile, keep working hard, and uh, keep reinvesting in your business, and you should become successful. By the way, to all of the people out there uh, who have uh, started a, um, a detailing business, thanks to my videos, or thanks to me being kind of an inspiration, I wanna hear from you once again. I know you guys leave some comments in other videos, but drop the comments in the comment section under the video to help inspire others that if you guys can do it, anybody else can do it as well, as long as they wanna work hard, put sweat equity in, and they're passionate about detailing. So passion guys and hard work are probably two of the takeaways if you have to learn one thing or two skills that you'll need above anything else if you wanna be successful and, um, and basically destroy your competition. If you're the hardest worker and if you have the biggest passion for what you're doing, well, you're, you'll contaminate your entire neighborhood and further even more because everybody's gonna wanna come and see you and uh, your detailing business is gonna grow to awesome standards. So hopefully I'm able to transmit my passion and knowledge through my videos. If you enjoyed this, by the way, smash the thumbs up button to show me your support. Uh, if you want, if you have any ideas for future videos or if you want me to dig in more into depth about one of these topics for starting your detailing business, again, leave a comment in the comment section under the video. Uh, if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button that's found under this video. And that way you'll subscribe to my channel and never miss my future videos. So you continue to learn more about car detailing, all the products, equipment, tips, tricks, and techniques. And by the way, in all my videos, I always leave links to the tools, products, and equipment in the description underneath the video for you guys to check them out. So like I always say, guys, well, thanks for being there. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being faithful to the Pan The Organizer channel. And don't forget to keep it tight, keep it clean, 
and I'll see you on the next one.